Hello there, and happy Halloween. I'm Mount Payne 27, and this is Dean of Doom. The show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wads. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Going Down, a megawad released in 2014 by Syriac Harris. He's known to the Doom community as Moldy, but he's also a very accomplished animator in his own right, and runs a popular YouTube channel where you can watch cute things like cows, rabbits, and kittens transform into nightmare fuel, albeit fascinating nightmare fuel. Syriac's megawad, you'll soon find out, is a similarly batty experience. In the text file, he famously describes his maps as fairly hard, with high body counts, and gameplay I would describe as chaotic evil. In addition to the levels, Syriac also wrote and sequenced all the middies in the wad himself, so I'd wager this is about as close as you can get to diving into his mind, at least from a Doom point of view. This is the first Doom wad I played based on recommendations from my audience. Turns out, you guys have excellent taste, so sit back and relax, because going down is a good one. Before we dive in, here's how the show works. We give each level in the wad two grades, one for quality and one for difficulty. We grade quality from A to F, and difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, and A through D in between. A grade A level is fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. Lower grades indicate the level lacks some or all of these qualities. Bear in mind that I'm not exactly great at Doom, and these reviews reflect only the opinions of one nerd with far too much time on his hands, so our definitions of difficulty and great map design will surely differ. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is really about spreading the joy of Doom, so let's do so. For the new viewers in the audience, here are the rules. 1. We play on ultraviolence. 2. We play each level from a pistol start. 3. In order to review the wad, I must have played it at least twice. 4. Saves are allowed, but discouraged. And 5. I go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions in cases where it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom, with compatibility settings on strict. Now, to the wad. Map 1. Going up. What goes down must go up. The gate guards at UAC headquarters are zombies now, so shoot them, run around the building, and take what I assume is a window cleaning platform to the roof, which is crawling with hit scanners. I'd acquire a shotgun post haste if I were you, because zombie men in large groups can be trouble. This level is straightforward almost to the point of being boring, but the environment is very fleshed out. The skyscrapers and the city skybox from Doom 2 comprise a pretty minimalist but convincing setting. Grade B. Difficulty D minus. Map 2. Evil admin. Tell you what. We've got a long wad ahead of us, so let's take a leak before we- oh, what the hell? You'll probably love Evil Admin if you've ever worked in an office. Nothing wrong with mowing down your annoying co-workers after they've been zombified. You're putting them out of their misery, really. The only question I have is why these UAC workers came to the office so heavily armed. The hit scanners are a plague in this map, because they can shoot you through the windows from the office across the hall. Syriac's detailing here is amazing. From the computers, to the swivel chairs, trash cans, paper strewn on the floor, not even the water cooler is safe from demonic corruption. You know the feeling when you have to drop something off on your boss's desk, and you breathe a sigh of relief because he's not there, and then it turns out he's there? That's what this encounter reminds me of. This map is a riot. Grade A-, difficulty D+. Map 3, Crawl Space, in which Doom Guy channels his inner John McClane. You'll be spending the majority of this level weaponless and wriggling through the building's ventilation system. For a Tyson map, it's not too challenging, except for the part where you get pincered by pinkies right as you're probably muttering to yourself, holy crap, is that a spider demon in map 3? Don't worry, you can tell a fragger when you grab this invulnerability, which sets off the first major tussle in the megawad so far. <laughs> This map's layout is a little obtuse, and cleaning up the stragglers at the end with Berserk is a bit of a chore. It's one of the weaker maps in the wad, but that's a high bar to meet. I'd say it's 3.6 Ronkin. What does the decimeter say? Uh, 3.6 Ronkin, but that's as high as the meat is. 3.6. Not great, not terrible. Grade, C+, difficulty, D+. Map 4, Blood and Rockets. It really is that simple. Find the rocket launcher and then head over to the eastern corridor to find a soul sphere, which initiates a jibtastic altercation. Fun as this fight is, Blood and Rockets is a lot less noteworthy than some of the maps in this set, so we're going to take a detour to talk about the music. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure my classroom is haunted. So the music in this wad is divisive. Some people find it annoying, repetitive, and or simplistic, while its advocates defend it on the grounds that it gives the wad a unique signature and complements its atmosphere. I can't deny that I'm swayed by the arguments on both sides, because these tracks aren't exactly easy to listen to, with their manic percussion, herky-jerky chromatic melodies, and heavy use of the organ. However, I think that fits the ethos of going down. It's impossible to imagine this megawatt with generic hard rock, heavy metal, or Bobby Prince's 12-bar blues in the background, because going down doesn't aim for action movies badassery, or straight up Sean's got the shotgun style intimidation. No. Going down is psychotic. It wants to violently murder you, but it also wants to play with you, mess with your head like Pennywise the Clown. The music carries an undercurrent of that precise kind of evil beneath its goofy sing-songiness. TLDR, I love it. It's perfect. And the song titles are just... <laughs> 
I don't even know. Zombie Goes Shopping, The Haunted Supermarket, The Haunted Aquarium, The Haunted Skeleton Factory, Hiding from the Robo Zombies, Mega Robo Clown Boss Battle, Robo Zombie Mecha Brain Boss Battle. Syriac, you're a madman. Anyway, back to the level real quick. Blood and Rockets is concise and satisfying, but it probably won't stick in your head. Grade, B-, minus. difficulty, C-. minus. Map 5, Time Warp. So you've got a bit of a dilemma here. You need the yellow key to exit the map, but it's behind this door, which requires a yellow key. Hmm. Well, good thing this is the floor where the UAC keeps their time machine. In a nice nod to TNT Evolution's wormhole, Time Warp lets you hop back and forth between two versions of the same map, the latter, dingier one, obviously posing more of a threat. I'd advise you save this invulnerability for when you grab the yellow key, because the response is pretty severe. Also keep a lookout for switches that manipulate elements in both time periods. Time Warp is probably the best map yet, a complete package of entertaining combat, creativity, a sense of narrative, and yet another showcase for Syriac's mastery over generic Doom 2 textures. Grade A. Difficulty C+. Map 6. Pain Frame. Oh, I get it now. Like, mainframe, but painful. You're sitting there going, yeah, Mount Pain, that's obvious. But I always thought of it like when you put a monster in its pain state for a frame. You know, pain frame. Either way, it's an appropriate title, because this tech-based arena forces you to take action in split-second windows or die for most of its short runtime. Almost anything you do will spawn in more monsters, so watch your step and try to use these irradiated cooling chambers for cover when you can. When you grab the red key, you'll be teleported Tron-style into the data space of the UAC mainframe. Disco dance your way out of there and try to avoid falling down during the final fight, as the mosh pit can get ugly. Pain Frame is a solid map, very sleek and intense. Grade B+, difficulty B. Map 7, bad reception. Ring ring. Hello, Doom Guy speaking. Oh, I'm um... No, I I'm in a lift. Uh, I'm in this building and I'm uh, killing monsters. Yes. Yes, it's my job. I told you about it before, remember? These interstitial sequences where Doomguy chats with his mom are great. I won't spoil any more of them so prospective new players in the audience can experience them in their full glory. Bad reception literally and figuratively interrupts the high drama of Doom Mom's nagging. It's a rather lethal, dead simple replacement. Killing the Mancubi releases a drove of Hell Knights and Pinkies, and killing the Arachnotrons raises platforms to a megasphere and a switch that opens the blue key room. Going for the key summons a spider mastermind and a murder of revenants. <laughs> If you're reckless or unaware of the triggers, you'll likely be overwhelmed. But fear not, you can lean on infighting, and as long as you don't burn all your rockets, you'll be fine. Bad reception isn't all that inspired, but it does the job. Grade, B-, difficulty, C+. Wait a minute. How many puns is that? The Mancubi are at a reception desk. Your presence gets a bad reception from the Mancubi receptionists after you just had bad reception on your phone call. You know what? Top marks. That is grade A punmanship. Map 8. Hide and seek. Hide and seek, huh? Spooky. Wonder what's gonna be... Oh. oh no. Oh god, they got out. This is the first map that earns going down the Halloween episode slot. You're more likely to get jump scared by an archfile in this level than in Plutonia's Hunted, and the lighting, claustrophobic environment, and sneaky enemy placement all contribute to a fun horror experience. The archfiles are very good at cornering you, and their silent triggers make it hard to tell when and where they're being released most of the time. Luckily, the map only has 17 enemies, six of which are pinkies. You never face more than three archies at once, and there's plenty of cover. I'd almost say it's the easiest map in the Megawad. Grade, B-, minus. difficulty, D. Map 9, Broken Records. Shh, DMs are trying to read. This is one of those maps in Going Down that's hard to prepare for. A musty old library full of demons that flock to you wherever you go, teleport around erratically, and start clogging up the works the longer you dally. Use your rockets judiciously and try to find a circuit so you can kite around the bigger demons. Getting stuck is certain death. The archfile placements are really nasty, especially at the end, and especially if you haven't saved enough rockets. From here on out, Syriac will be merciless with archfiles. Broken Records is sumptuously lit and nicely adorned, but it's not as suited for this wad's brand of frantic combat as some of the other maps here. Grade B, difficulty B-. minus. Map 10, Trip Switch. Whew. Trip Switch is a rude awakening, like a pair of live jumper cables clamped onto your balls. First time through, I thought this map was going to end my descent for good, but I'm the patient type when it comes to Doom. Lucky for me, because Trip Switch is as fun as it is cruel. The action is set in some kind of maintenance area, with lots of pipes, electrical panels, and other abstract tech. The map itself even looks a little like a circuit board. Here's some advice. Hoard your rockets. When the time comes to hit the switch with all the caution tape on it, sprint for the Megasphere and unload on these barons, buying yourself enough room to slip past them into this nook. Not only will the canal fill with monsters, but archviles will spawn. One in the opening room, and one at the other end of the canal. So pray for enough rockets to blast through to the first one. Then pray that the other one separates himself enough from his resurrected friends for you to get him. Then pray you have enough ammo left to deal with the rest. If not, well, there's always Berserk. For how early in the Megawad trip switch is placed, it's easily one of the hardest maps in going down. Very chaotic, and very evil. Grade A-. Difficulty A. 
Map 11, Vivisection. The Doom equivalent of torture porn, Vivisection is bloody disgusting, some kind of haunted hospital full of demons, cages, and crushers. It starts off even more oppressive and hostile than Trip Switch. The layout is claustrophobic and packed with enemies, and if you try to sprint your way through it, I guarantee you, you will die gruesomely. Take on one thing at a time, use the environment to your advantage, and hopefully happen into some infighting for best results. What makes Vivisection much easier than the previous map is this invulnerability sphere, which you should definitely rampage with after hitting the Skull Switch. It'll unleash a Cyber Demon and all kinds of other badness onto the killing floor. If you're lucky, the Cyber Demon will bumble into this crusher and get itself killed. The first two times I beat this map, he did just that, but for this recording, he just wouldn't cooperate. I spent ten minutes corralling him to no avail, then decided to just sit in the elevator and wait for him, and met with success almost immediately. Even after all that, I'd still rather trick him into crushing himself than play Rock Attack in this cramped death trap of a level. Grade, B, difficulty, B+. Map 12, Dead End. Alright, one last floor to check and we're out of here. Oh good, it's short. Guess I'll just grab the red key and... What was that? Oh boy. Well... Here goes nothing. Strap in, folks, this is where going down gets real. The shotgun is the only weapon you get for free in this sewage-soaked arena. Grabbing the chain gun releases this. The rocket launcher awakens some heckling hell knights, and three archviles guard the plasma. It's much more entertaining and crazy to go for multiple weapons at once. Syriac gives you plenty of room to dance around and sufficient munitions to defend yourself. Pressing these two switches will open the exit gate, at which point the level will be inundated with several waves of teleporting goons, including a very troublesome archvile. Dead End features some of the best slaughter action in the wild. It's bloody, frenzied fun, and I love it. Grade A, difficulty B. Map 13, Deep Trouble. Deep Trouble picks up right where the last level left off, with Doomguy presumably surviving a hundred foot drop into more sewers. Aesthetically, it's an extension of the last level, but your movement is much more restricted. You've really only got three options. Shoot your way up the stairs, shoot your way down the stairs, or hide in cubbies that keep teleporting monsters in behind you. The plasma gun is invaluable for tearing through this stuff, but don't waste your ammo because the cage fight at the bottom of the stairs is no joke. You're totally exposed to attacks in the round, and the cacodemons make it hard to rocket stuff without blowing yourself up. But if you can flank this demonic parade and camp out in the hallway, you'll make it out alive. Deep Trouble is agreeably aggressive, but a little redundant. Grade B-, difficulty B+. Map 14, Secrets and Lies. If there's a way to tackle this map without discomfort, I haven't found it. This is another one of those really quiet starts where you can picture Syriac rubbing his hands together, laughing maniacally like, oh, if only you knew what you were in for. This map's progression is a bit unorthodox. You're essentially finding hidden switches that slowly open up the map. If you're getting ramrodded with ambushes, you're making progress. Trying to describe encounters in this map is kind of futile, because you could be dealing with a hodgepodge of different demon combinations depending on the order you spring traps in. Basically, try to eliminate Archviles and the Spider Mastermind ASAP, because they can really make your life miserable. The map Perhaps two secrets are required and give you nothing. Haha, <laughs> secrets and lies. This one's a bit excessively nasty and backhanded for my liking. Grade C+, plus. difficulty A-. Minus. Map 15, Gladiator. One of the most entertaining maps in going down, Gladiator can be extremely punishing if you don't notice that one of these pillars is not like the others. Each weapon you lower will spawn in a different set of challengers, but for maximum fun, hit them all at once. Embrace the insanity. Prioritize headhunting the arch files and try not to get whittled down too much by the spider demon and you'll win the crowd. After doing your obligatory Russell Crowe impression, hit the skull switch to trigger complete anarchy amongst the hoi polloi. It's wonderful. Not long after, Caesar himself will descend to challenge you, but he's easily distracted by angry fans flinging their demon beers and demon nachos at him. It's pretty easy to take laps around the arena without suffering damage, so wait out the infighting and you'll win the day. From here you can climb into the grandstands, open the secret exit, snatch a few discarded demonic soft drinks, and skedaddle. Oh, and don't forget to take a bathroom break. Gladiator is light-hearted, action-packed, and very fun. Top-tier stuff. Grade A. Difficulty B. Map 31, Stair Crazy. This map finds Doom Guy taking the stairs back up to the roof of the building so he can call Doom Mom back. My favorite part of this map is how you can see glimpses of levels you've already been to on your way up. Actually, the whole premise of this map is pretty funny if you think about it. Like one of the demons said, you know what guys, we might want to add a set of stairs from the Coliseum to the roof, you know, for when the elevator's out in case of a fire or something? I'm really not a big fan of fighting on the stairs in Doom. The weapon sprite gets in your way when you have to aim down, and rockets like to detonate too close to you when the auto-aim doesn't work properly. The combat here is not very challenging or creative except for this big fight, where you'll be sandwiched between monsters teleporting in at the top and bottom of the stairwell. There's a pair of arch files behind this grate as well, which is a real pisser. Speaking of pissers, this imp at the end. Syriac sure does have a thing with toilets. Grade B. Difficulty B+. Map 32. 
Roof Rage. An excellent reprise of the first level, this full-on slaughter map doubles as a bit of subtle exposition. The fact that the monsters have not only replenished, but gotten stronger since you were last here, suggests that the demonic corruption at UAC headquarters has gotten a lot worse. After knocking out the first wave of enemies, flee to the surrounding buildings via this teleporter because you really don't want to be around when the next wave shows up. Don't catch a cyber demon rocket, disperse the cacao cloud when necessary, and this fight will take care of itself. You'd expect the super secret level in a wad as tough as going down to be harder, but I appreciate the breather anyway. Footnote, Dim Guy really should have told his mom to check the news. There's no way a firefighter of this magnitude wouldn't have been the night's top story. Grade, B+. Difficulty, C+. Map 16, Black Mass. Another Halloween-appropriate map, Black Mass features some neat Hell Cathedral aesthetics and a whole lot of nasty traps. This map really punishes you for grabbing stuff in the wrong order. All the weapons are booby-trapped, of course, but a healthy sense of paranoia about picking up anything or pretty much going anywhere new will serve you well. The ending's pretty harrowing. A cyber demon archbishop and a reverend mother mastermind will come out of the woodwork when you hit two skull switches, and the chapel will flood with fodder monsters. Luckily, it's easy to cheese this fight by exploiting the spider demon's terrible auto-aim, making her shoot all her friends in the congregation that stupidly cluster beneath you. Of course, there's also the secret invulnerability if you're impatient. Take your pick. Grade, B+, difficulty, B+. Map 17. Rest in pieces. The blood reference is not a coincidence. This map will rip out your heart and feed it to you. I think of it as Map 14's sadistic big brother. It's more full of traps than Raiders of the Lost Ark and nowhere near as fun, with some of the most hellacious art file placements in the Megawad. It seems really inspired by Scythe 2 and Alien Vendetta, with its compactness and use of lighting effects to add depth to its mostly monochrome texture choices. Almost every room will surprise you with monsters, comically rising out of coffins, bursting out of the walls, or just warping in out of nowhere, and grabbing the yellow key unleashes an almighty cluster the main room gets clogged with hit scanners, revenants, macubi, and a cyber demon, and something like six art files teleport to locations all over the map. I wouldn't say it's unfeasible to finish this level without the secret BFG, because I know better than to suggest something is impossible with an earshot of the Doom community, but trying to get through all this with plasma and rockets sounds about as fun as tuberculosis. This was the second map that stopped me in my tracks, and I think it's the hardest map in going down relative to its place in the map order. Grade B. Difficulty A. Map 18, Buried Alive. Talk about an immersive start. Shooting your way out of a would-be coffin, collecting supplies in a deserted cave, and finding a UFO of all things. Hit this detonator to blow a hole in the wall build engine style, revealing a ravine full of barons, hell knights, and cyber demons. The ensuing chaos is hard to describe. You're surrounded by revenants and arachnotrons, the heavy demons below block your escape, everything is infighting, you'll be getting sniped by the cyber on top of the spacecraft, at some point an archvile will teleport into your safe space, and the longer you cling to life the more walls collapse around you, leaving you open but it cheap shots in all directions. Maybe it was the lack of oxygen getting to my brain? Vsauce would call it taphophobia, or the fear of being buried alive. But I started to lose my mind just a little bit at this point in the recording. I don't remember having such a tough time during my first playthrough, but Buried Alive was really oppressive this time around, and I don't know if I'd like to play it again. You won't find a red skull key in this level, which is what you'll need to take the elevator any further down, but the blue key works on the UFO. Hmm, let's see where that takes us. Grade B, difficulty A minus. Map 19, 200 megahertz. Hmm, wonder what that title could mean. Jeez, there are an awful lot of arch files in this spaceship. Let's just take this teleporter and, oh, that's why. 100 arch files and 100 pain elementals makes 200 megahertz. There's something especially bizarre and inspired about this map, even held up against the other 31 creatively bizarre set pieces in this wad. 200 megahertz doesn't take you down. It takes you beyond, to parallel alien cities choked with two of the most hostile enemy types in the game, creepy, inscrutable aesthetics with a soundtrack fit for a carnival of lunatics. In any other wad, this level would be abrasive, horrifying, unpleasant, but Syriac gives you a BFG, over 9,000 cells, 7 invulnerabilities, and 8 helpful secrets, which makes decimating these bastards comparatively easy. The de-emphasis of difficulty lets you soak up the atmosphere, and when you finally return to that godforsaken cave, you're encouraged to wonder, where the hell did I just go? Footnote. Since this is boom, there's no lost soul limit, so the pain elementals will produce a frightening number of lost souls. During this recording, however, something really weird happened. They generated exactly 666 lost souls. <laughs> uh, happy, happy Halloween, Halloween everyone. everyone! Grade A. Difficulty B-. Map 20. The Mouth of Madness. The Mouth of Madness is... You know what? Just watch.
So the elevator breaks, and you land in the middle of a lake of lava, face to face with a gaping monstrosity that vomits something like 400 demons at you. It's an incredibly intimidating spectacle that gets ugly really quickly if you don't know where to go. But don't throw in the towel just yet. Shoot out the beast's eyes, dodge the cyber demons, and grab the BFG. Then teleport to the ridge with the Hell Knights and Arachnitrons, and find another teleporter to get a pair of rad suits, which you can use to skate around in the safety of the lava while the demons kill each other. After a while, you'll be able to wade into the melee, nuke the cyber demons, and lay waste to the seething horde. A pure personification of psychopathy, the Mouth of Madness is a show-stopping spectacle with unforgettable visuals and insane action. Ecstatically horrific. I give this an A with a difficulty of B+. Without the rad suits, it would have been an X. Map 21, Indigestion. So Doomguy jumped into the Mouth of Madness and he lost all his guns on his way down the esophagus of madness, or maybe in the stomach of madness. Doesn't matter. Pistol starts are our bread and butter. This map is freaky and gross and I dig it. You'll be relying on the beast's digestive system to do most of the fighting for you in this Tyson map, and if you don't like infighting, tough, because there's too much going on here for you to punch everything to death. This Arachnitron Baron encounter is this map in a nutshell. Let the Arachnitron carve up the Barons who can't attack back, then grab a Soul Sphere and telefrag the spider. Do this too early and you've got two Barons to deal with in a tight space. Moral of the story, as long as you're patient, this map won't give you any trouble. Indigestion is a good change of pace. Grade, B+, difficulty, C+. Map 22. Constipation Station. Best thing about this map is that it seems to be lodged in the colon of madness, and all the monsters in here seem totally unperturbed by living in a giant demon's ass. This fleshy tech base reminds me of Pain Frame or Trip Switch with more organ matter laying around, and the action feels a bit redundant, like an early map repurposed for use in the final third. If I were you, I'd avoid grabbing the blue key before you've geared up and killed everything. I'm not going to say this map is easy, but if you've made it this far, Constipation Station is not a serious threat. Grade B-, difficulty B. Map 23, Demonology. This is Going Down's Black Sheep. Well, more appropriately, it's Black Phillip. Demonology is a sprawling, deliberately paced scavenger hunt, engineered not so much to overwhelm you as wear you down. You're tasked with finding seven yellow skull keys, some of which are hidden very carefully, all of which are fiercely defended. If you're ever low on health, don't be low on health. This map doesn't mess around. Watch out for these annoying arch files on the wall, a spider mastermind dropping down from the ceiling, the ambush in the laboratory. Actually, the lab is more notable as a decorative triumph than a combat set piece. Look at this. It's a full chemistry set. Beakers full of liquid. Corpses hanging in cages. It's so cool. When you found all the keys, step into the magic circle and get ready for one of the hardest fights in the wad. No, not these arch files. I'm talking about the ones that teleported into the library, which you left full of corpses. If you're low on ammo for this part, don't be low on ammo for this part. Syriac doesn't give you enough rockets to deal with the arch files, let alone everything they resurrect. It took me nearly an hour to beat this map while recording, and I thought, I must have just screwed up somewhere. Let me play it again. So I did. It didn't take me as long, but my god, was it ever still hard. Demonology is a feast for the eyes and for the demons. Shout out to yet another toilet. I'm not even going to ask why their sewage is red. Grade, A-. minus. Difficulty, A+. Plus. Map 24, Bridge of Blood. Talk about perfect timing. Bridge of Blood is an epic slaughter fest tailored to letting you blow off steam after the last level's grind. Except for pointing out the haunting and gorgeous macro architecture on display here, I'm hard pressed to put into words what this level is like. It's just aggression, explosions, screaming and snarling noises, and at the end of it all, you'll leave a literal red carpet of corpses behind. Great stuff. Grade, A, difficulty, B+. Plus. Map 25, Forbidden Fruit. For sporting such a low monster count, Forbidden Fruit is vicious and deceptively labor-intensive. You'll have to destroy all the fruit to escape this demonic Eden. They scream when they're shot and explode grotesquely when they die, which makes you feel like you're doing the right thing by eliminating them. Forbidden Fruit is infested with arch files, which can be hard to deal with given the rough terrain and spare cover, and there's one particularly nasty fight that you trigger by going near the fruit parked by a view of the fathomless depths of hell. I wouldn't recommend doing as I did and saving that fruit for last, because a bunch of revenants and arch files will teleport in when the last fruit goes kaboom, and they're even harder to deal with than the swarm of flying demons from earlier. I can tell Syriac really went all out on this map. It feels rigorously sculpted and painstakingly textured, and exudes a kind of wrongness that makes me very uneasy. It's not a lot of fun to play, but I'll give it an A- for effort and atmosphere, with an A for difficulty. Map 26, Insanity. 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 Really though, this map is fucking evil. Rarely do I find Doom maps legitimately off-putting, but this one might actually be cursed. I'm never gonna forget the way these endless rows of cubicles melt into a bloody, fleshy death pit full of shrieking demons. The pure drama and spectacle of that moment, combined with the adult music, frantic combat, and off-putting presentation in general, put insanity in a very special category of Doom maps. If you know where to find the BFG in Plasma, this map isn't terribly challenging, but as a horror experience, I have yet to see it beaten, and the ending is unreal. Just Look at this. P.
People really like the Mouth of Madness, but for me, Insanity will always be the map and going down that most knocks my socks off. Grade A+. Difficulty B+. Map 27, Hard Cover. This satanic rewrite of the abandoned mines crossed with Plutonia's Caged is nasty for nasty's sake, and less substantive than what you'd normally expect from a Map 27. It is indeed a hard map to find cover in, and easily one of the three most restrictive arenas in the Megawad. Unlike in Bridge of Blood, Hard Cover's high monster density is more frustrating than exciting, and results in a cheaper sense of challenge than you'd get in other cramped maps like Trip Switch or Rest in Pieces. The invulnerability prevents this map from being unnecessarily painful, and if you save plastic Plasma for the ludicrous influx of hit scanners at the end you'll have it made. I don't hate hard cover, but it seems like less attention was paid to it than most of the other maps. Grade B minus. Difficulty B plus. Map 28, Necropolis. Source port nerds, I hope you're proud of me. I played this map in PR Boom Plus. Why, you ask? Turns out PR Boom Plus excels at handling a lot of stuff happening on your screen at once, and Z-Doom really doesn't. You guys taught me that, by the way. As for Necropolis, well, it's incredible. The architecture is daunting and dripping with atmosphere, and the action is second to none. You'll be up against a veritable tsunami of demons, I'm talking Mouth of Madness and Bridge of Blood combined. Go for the BFG and this gory mound will start summoning demons, grab an invincibility and go for the switch and start scything down revenants. You'll never get them all before the power-up expires, and they'll keep coming for much longer than you think they'll be able to. And just when you're thinking, damn, that's gotta be as much as this map can throw at me, Syriac says, Wait till I get going! Activate this skull switch by the blue key and... I don't know. Stand awestruck by the power of hell? Rip and tear? Call your doom mom one last time? Probably all the above. This is what going down is all about. Gleeful mass slaughter. Gorgeous environments to the dulcet tones of possessed clown music. Grade A. Difficulty A. Map 29. Demolition. Alright, we made it back. Now let's do what we should have done 30 maps ago. Boss battles in Doom are always a little disappointing, but Demolition isn't bad. This arena looks fantastic, for one thing. I can't believe Syriac took vanilla Doom textures and made them into a convincing heap of concrete, rubble, and rebar. The Spider Demon and Revenants do a good job of protecting each other, but you should probably wait to deal with them until you knock out the reinforcements. Killing the Spider Mastermind will make her molt into a red Spider Mastermind. Even though she can shoot Mancubus and Revenant projectiles at you in addition to a regular chain gun, the red Spider Mastermind is still less threatening than these backstabbing archviles. For a boss map in Doom, Demolition is great, if only because it's not an icon of sin, and because it's neither ridiculously difficult nor ridiculously easy. Grade B. Difficulty B. Map 30. Game over. Well, it turns out it was all just a video game. Never mind that they're in the middle of constructing a UAC apartment building across the street, just ignore that. It's finally time to go see your mom. Go to the bathroom, wash your hands, eat a berserk pack, grab your super shotgun, and... Wait, what's this switch do? Spoilers, it wasn't all just a video game. Well, actually, it is still just a video game. For some reason, your front door is locked from the outside, so you'll have to wait for one of the demons spawned by the icon to unlock it for you. Squeeze past the demons and you beat them going down. Game Over manages to be quaint and adorable, but also a fucking nightmare. Well, there's only one way to end a wad like this. Grade A-, minus, difficulty D. So, words that come to mind when I think of going down? Addictive. Attractive. Creative. Concise. Trippy, terrifying, funny. Syriac's imagination is as bottomless as his megawad, but perhaps his greatest strength as a mapper is his acute sense of pacing. These levels entertain, impress, and never overstay their welcome. I had no idea what I was in for when I first booted up this wad, and I certainly never expected it to be such a treasure trove of great gimmicks, kinetic gameplay, and memorable moments. To the viewers who suggested I play this, you have my thanks. My final grade for going down is an A. It's the newest entry in my top 5 Doom Wands of all time. Difficulty-wise, I'm also going to give it an A. The only wand I've reviewed on this channel that gave me a harder time was Alien Vendetta, so be warned. Now for my Dean's List. Valedictorian. Map 26, Insanity. Salutatorian. It's going to be a tie between Map 28, Necropolis, and Map 19, 200 MHz. Class President, Map 23, Demonology. And the dunce cap goes to... Map 14, Secrets and Lies. Going down absolutely deserves an honor roll and the following maps made it. Map 2, Evil Admin. Map 5, Time Warp. Map 10, Trip Switch. Map 12, Dead End. Map 15, Gladiator. Map 20, The Mouth of Madness. Map 23, Demonology. Map 24, Bridge of Blood. Map 25, Forbidden Fruit. And Map 30, Game Over. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wad down below. I'd love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. This is Mount Payne 27 and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.